Coming at you with three. Two, not two, fool. And welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the vodcast. Welcome to the broadcast. Boys and girls, welcome to the show. This is Convincing Idiots. I'm Dean. Says Daniel right here. I am Brian Genix. My name is Nicholas. I'll be playing the part of your resident millennial this week. Poorly. Uh, poorly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if this is your first time joining us, uh, we are three friends from three different generations talking about nerd amazing. pop culture stuff. We're really great at it. Mm. Uh, you've probably been here before, and that's why you know that what I say is true. Uh, if you are not already following us on social media and things such as that, uh, you can find links to all of those uh, individual websites. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. You can Google Convincing Idiots Link Tree. That's L-I-N-K-T-R-E-E. And that will give you uh, the links to all of the aforementioned uh, or, or previously mentioned uh, social media. Uh, you can also visit our shiny new website. Uh, that's convincingidiots.wordpress.com. Um, and there you will find all of those links as well as links to our email, where to listen to us, which is on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Uh, and as always, feel free to ask your home assistant device to play the Convincing Idiots podcast. We are back here for... What I understand is our not necessarily 50th posted episode, but our 50th original recorded, original, original recorded episode. Is that correct, right. Brian? That is correct. So we had one replay a couple weeks ago when both you guys were under the weather. So we got a replay and that was our 50th episode was, a, was actually, well, it wasn't the 50th. It was like the 49th, 48th. Anyway. But yes, you're exactly correct. This is our 50th recorded episode. Um, hard to believe. Not quite 50 weeks. You know, we're coming up on, it'll be late late October, mid-October. It will mm -hmm. be a one-year anniversary since we started this thing here. But uh, 50 episodes later, it's uh, certainly pushing a year oh. we've been doing this uh, already, believe it or not. So, How did we get here at once a week? Was it at the beginning? Well, maybe at the beginning we weren't on necessarily uh, regular one-week schedules, were we? And then in the beginning there was some multi we put out a couple times a week or That's something right. like that, short episodes. Before yeah. we were well-seasoned veterans, professionals, uh, had a real structure down to this. So, yeah. I will tell you what. Our podcast... Mm -hmm. Our podcast uh, is as old as Brian, and <laughs> just the same. Our mm -hmm. fucking back hurts. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it, we we creak when we get out of a chair. Um, podcast hair is gray. I mean, geez. Well, that's just Bri from Brian and, carrying us this far. <laughs> the episode. Yes. And and we also convincing idiots also makes it a point to yell at other podcasts to get off our our lawn. That's yes. that's correct. That's correct. So. And the podcast recently had to start taking uh, Lipitor as well. Yep. Yep. As well. <laughs> and by Andrew. Viagra. Not not Viagra, but yeah, it, yeah. Maybe <laughs> it's just so no confusion. No, no, oh, that's not just fine. Working. I'm not <laughs> on Viagra. Yeah, my shit works. I, I just, just want to just want to make that perfectly understood. Yeah, so it's uh, it's, it's certainly. <laughs> I mean, you go back and it's actually interesting. Even the, even the the repost that we did uh, a couple weeks ago was from even uh, January, and to listen even to that episode comparison to. Uh, our first few, I mean, it's just, I guess it's, you know, just with practice and everything else. And we've refined our, you know, we got the headsets and different things. So hopefully the sound out there, if you're listening to us, oh, the the sound is, is better incredible. for you out mm -hmm. there. But yeah, it's just like you said, Nick, it's just, we get into a more of a routine, a more of a comfort level and everything like that. So yeah, 50 episodes uh, later, it's uh, still having fun doing it. And we all, we, the three of us have said is that that's when we, it, that how long will we do this? It's that that's the answer. Is as long as we're having fun with it, and we're right. certainly certainly not making a lot of money with it. <laughs> Maybe that now, will change now, someday. Now, now, yeah. now, Easy. now. Easy. Yeah. That depends on what a lot of money is to some people. That's true. It just depends. That, that true. is true. That is um, true. That is true. I mean, that being said, 
Um, Brian's pretty right, but mm-hmm. yeah. See, I, you never know. I, I quantify everything in friendship. So, I quantify uh, things in friendship. So to mm-hmm. me, we have made so much money. There you go. That's very good. Oh, there you go. That's nice. That's see, very good. See, I, I'm, I'm sitting here reflecting, and I realize that I have matured in this podcast. I have grown uh, as a human, as a, as a spiritual being. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't fucking curse as much. I don't say, t- I don't say other phrases that I'm not allowed to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I've grown tremendously. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I will say that uh, I, you know, this this <laughs> podcast certainly has allowed the three of us to talk more and to become yeah. closer friends just by sheer. It's you know, I used to you know, and people I, wish we wouldn't, but <laughs> <laughs> so that like you like you said, yeah, that's definitely been a one uh, uh, significant reward of the show is getting to know you guys more, being clo- getting closer to you guys as friends. Um. So any any kind of favorite episodes thus far in you know moments I like that, that one you that you and me did together on? Brian that was fun that was a good one that was <laughs> yes, very that nice was. and relaxing and it's, I mean they're all good Actually, uh, that was but, my but, favorite but episode was... as well <laughs> <laughs> If I can recall we could we could get a complete three or four Nick complete sentences out <laughs> consecutively without one interruption that was that was pretty good but yeah. bullshit yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, a, d- a decent <laughs> flow to it it was nice <laughs> i'm laid up with fucking covid and youtube uh mm-hmm. fellas mm-hmm. are i re- i almost said something i should have um yeah youtube fellas are sitting there kissy kissy uh with your tongues there <laughs> Well, and you're right. Thus far, we so we've done episodes where it's just been Dean and I a mm-hmm. couple times, Nick and mm-hmm. I, the one yep. time. So we've done uh, it Nick... twice too, because Dean oh, had two right. COVID shots and he was down to right. right. them. That's we've done right. it twice alone. Yep, you're right. And then next week, I'll be out of town with uh, oh, my lovely girlfriend boy. Allie. So you guys are going to shoot an episode without me. Then we'll have the whole combination, and I'm sure the episode will be flawless. And uh, it would be a, a, a prepared outline. I mean, yeah, you'll be missed, the whole thing. but like, I mean, I'm sure it won't be much different than this. I, I, that's right. That's right. I'm sure it won't we, be. We will use uh, Queen's English, proper English. Mm-hmm. We won't curse. I don't think we're going to be talking about anything lewd or disgusting. Mm-hmm. Um, no. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to come off as, I mean, if you're looking for like a, a good straight like news cast you know next week's probably when you want to want to listen yeah right? your heart right. out walter cronkite that's that'll be us just uh bringing so you the fucking shock that you knew that name <laughs> yeah i've heard I of him but... <laughs> wow <laughs> all right so uh so all seriousness nick so that was a fun episode you and i did and i had yeah fun. so we are here just the two-man show this week uh we are deanless mm. um dean is uh is uh on on the path to uh, helping humanity out by getting his first vaccination today. So uh, Mm -hmm. he's feeling a little tired. I think he was feeling not sick or anything, just tired, just sleepy. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mm -hmm. he's getting some shut eye, getting that beauty rest. And uh, so we're going to give it our best here. Just the two of us today. One shooting with you and also the separate ones with Dean. So those are definitely two of the, my favorite ones personally. Anyway, so any other candies that holiday, you know, it, 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 it don't necessarily need to only be available on the holidays, but maybe they're, just the holiday season makes you want that type of candy more so. Anything come to mind for you? Um, I know that um, when when I was at my uh, ex mother in law's, she would always have just bowls of peanut butter M and M's. So t- to me, for the past ten years, that's been uh, that to me. That's a holiday candy. Uh, Better than the Reese's Pieces, or? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I think so. Totally two different tastes. I mean, you have the yeah. same. It's the same idea, but mm-hmm. two different tastes. And they're so and they're bigger. Is it just in the bowl? So everybody has to put their filthy hands in the same bowl. To yeah, get yeah. Them, or yeah, and and children included. So so mm-hmm. you have that uh, that mystery uh, substance on top of them. Yeah. Maybe that's where you're able to build up enough antibodies to not get as sick this season because you were eating that's right. disgusting germs from your people over the years. Either perhaps. that or that's where COVID started last year. 
any mm. of the ones Nick that come to mind that uh, some Honestly, of your favorite episodes I, or I, moments? Yeah, I don't say this just to I don't know to 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 make this point so much, but I do think it is a testament to how we have grown as a show doing this. I would say the last couple episodes, the new last newer couple episodes that we've done have been some of my favorites. And, you know, there are fun souvenirs, memories, um, <clears throat> perhaps one of the greatest souvenir souvenirs that, uh, uh, and, or slash memory that I made down there was, uh, being on the beach. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, uh, a lovely day on Friday, we, we went to the beach, went to the ocean and, uh, we put our st- uh, my, my dad and stepmom were with us and two boys and Robin and I, and we, uh, set all our stuff down at the beach and head towards the water. The boys are rushing towards the water and I'm right there with them and you know we're getting ready to go in and boys are kind of you know in there about knee high or so and i'm i see something you know i'm seeing all this you know i always like to look in the water to see like what kind of stuff you know if maybe sure. you can find a crab or you know something like that something cool or if you don't kids, step maybe a crab yeah right yeah or you know you see like a fish or something you know you sometimes when the waves wash up you see a lot mm. of the fish and stuff um so anyway i see something uh uh, see something in the water uh it's like a i don't know it's, it's hard to tell kind of what it, what it was but it was dark and it didn't seem to look anything like a fish it was solid so it was like you know maybe i don't know i couldn't really get a good look at it i thought it maybe looked like a piece of like um i don't know maybe like driftwood or something that had come up mm-hmm. or something with barnacles something interesting maybe that had a little bit of a story to it or something like that so waves are washing up back and forth and i you know kind of get a little clearer picture of it every time the waves wash it over and then as soon as i get you know, a good look at it, it takes it back again. Well, finally, after this happens a few times, uh, I, you know, I noticed that, um, you know, it's not moving or swimming, so there's no reason for me to be afraid of it or anything like that, so like, oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna grab it, see what it is. And grab it, pull it up, and I feel it in my hand, and I look at it out of the water, and mm-hmm. what am I holding in my hand other than a turd? <laughs> <laughs> it, is a, it, is a, it is a log of <laughs> I just yeah. think a little bit more as we go, we kind of riff off of each other better. We flow a little better. And the longer we go, the more, um, I don't know if you want to call them inside jokes, because it's but things that, different jokes that we build over time on here hey, that we can throw back gravy. to and stuff like ham that. Gravy. Like ham gravy. Yeah. And, you know, mm-hmm. just, well, we don't bring ham gravy up a lot, but I don't know, just random. I don't know. It's just kind of fun. To, if you've been here since the beginning, you know, you understand. Right. It's at, yeah, at the end exactly. of every video, you'll hear... Ham gravy. Ham gravy. Now, yep. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and and agree with Nick on this, but I the reason that is the reason I believe that we have that every, you know the most recent seem like the best is actually the goal in like any show, right? Is you want every show should be the best one you did because mm-hmm. you should grow and stuff. I mean, yeah, you'll throw a stinker in there uh, occasionally, but I think every episode should be your best Mm -hmm. yeah in theory right sure sure but if i don't know about like specific episodes but some of nick's outros are some of my favorite moments oh you're sweet yeah i I agree mr t last week yeah it was good exactly what you were about to say brian Mm yeah the bgs yep barry gibb i want to say andy gibb barry Barry, gibb yeah barry gibb yep Mm-hmm. Barry Gibb is probably my favorite moment of, of the podcast. <laughs> my Hands favorite down. person ever. So. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> but if you haven't listened to it, um, maybe in uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, maybe, Brian, you can put up uh, under here at this moment the link or the of the episode to go back and watch or, sure. or listen to. Because sure. that episode, you can even fast forward through the horse shit that's my voice and get to the end of where you hear <laughs> Nick's outro uh, <laughs> in, in Barry Gibbs' uh, voice. I like is, how you're signing Brian up for extra tasks during no, the show. It could be great if okay. right now you could just throw that's this all right. in. <laughs> that's all right. On a, on a YouTube channel. Enough. That's okay. On our YouTube channel. <laughs> I separated that outro on its own. So if you go to our YouTube oh, channel, oh, okay. you Convincing Idiots, so there's a separate video, and you'll see Barry Gibbs' uh, godlike uh, 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 photo there on the, the beginning. Hair. Yes, exactly mm-hmm. right. So there's Nick's uh, outro there for the uh, Barry Gibbs. By the way, Barry I'll tell Gibbs, you, the only thing I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to stay alive. That's right. <laughs> Very good. Barry Gibb made a new album, by the way. Did some collaborations with different really? uh, current artists. Allie turned me on to it. Check oh. it out. 
Nice. If you're an old Bee Gees fan, I think you find it on Apple Music and some of the streaming services. Okay. Out there. I fucking yeah. love the Bee Gees. I don't even give a shit. Me too. I love the Bee Gees. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. excellent Absolutely. stuff. Yep. Ab- absolutely. All right. So on that note, let's we'll end on a in a in a high note like the Bee Gees singing. Excellent. Nick, do you want to remind the folks where they can find us? <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. I'm a big you fan. You sing it like the Bee Gees. As much as like, I love the Bee Gees, I am oh, just, yes, please. I'm just as big of a fan of the Barry Gibb talk show uh, that, uh, that Jimmy Fallon used to do on SNL. Great skit. Yeah, great skit. It's good stuff. The, uh, you do not try to joke me down on my own show. I'm Barry F. and Gibb. You think I'm here at the point of my Australian pot all day? I'll have a show. I will murder you on national television. <laughs> Then Let's you, go. Nick, Nick, Nicholas, you <laughs> should go ahead and let the fans know where to find us in Barry Gibbs' uh, voice, please. I would love to. Well, you can find us by simply searching for Convincing Idiots on YouTube, <laughs> Facebook. Also, you can head on over to Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter, we're at Convincing Idiots with no ass. But also on Instagram. On Instagram, it's convincing underscore any hats. <laughs> we can also be found on TikTok. On TikTok, it's you guess it, that's right. It's convincing any hats. I'm convincing any hats. <laughs> if you want to drop us an email, you can go ahead over to convincing idiots at gmail.com. Let us know what kind of things you want to hear about. <laughs> Also, don't forget, we're available wherever you like to listen to your podcast. Whether it be Google or Spotify. Oh, you will. Or perhaps even Apple Podcasts. <laughs> don't forget to ask your go home assistant device to play the Convincing Idiots podcast. <laughs> oh, be sure to head on over to our one and only Convidian Spain Tree. That's L I N K T R E E. So, for another episode of Convincing Idiot, I'm your resident millennial, Nick. I'm Dean. I'm Brian. Best I'm convinced, outro ever. I'm going to convince you that way to go ahead and check out the brand new Monsters reboot. Directed by Rob Zahabra. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> Check that out. For yeah. If you have a couple minutes and want to listen to something else besides this particular episode here. so I appreciate yeah. the kind words on that. I must actually go back. I don't know if I ever, if we ever touched base on this again. Mm-hmm. That I think that day we were talking about the reason that, uh, the whole reason what came up in the show that we did, the that Dean asked me to do the Barry Gibb outro was we were talking about a Foo Fighters uh, side project. Ah, that's right. The DGs. Mm-hmm. And I misspoke because I'm illiterate and apparently can't read the difference between Satan and Satin. But it's not actually called Hail Satan. It's called Hail Satin, which makes a lot ah, more sense. Yes, and, it does. Uh, so, but I don't know if either of you did listen to that uh, album, but it is very good. It's very good. I heard so, some of so it. You can play the role, so you can play the role of Barry Gibb and a fucking idiot? Yeah, That's awesome. That's impressive. A convincing one. I convinced you that it you was Hail are. Satan. Nobody fact checked me. Nobody was like, "Hey, it's not what it's called." Absolutely. No, well done. Out. Well done, sir. <laughs> Cheers. Well, it, well, yeah. it was funny to think that there was a a, a BG's knockoff <laughs> uh, called Hail Satan. That's still pretty right. funny. Yeah, yeah. right. I, yeah. I thought it was just supposed to be so, you know. Uh, yeah, so di- they were just going so balls to the wall crazy with it that they were like, "Oh, let's just call it that to be so you know different or you know off brand or whatever." Speaking of, did you guys any of you see the video uh, this week? It was uh, outside where the Foo Fighters were playing, and I guess wherever they're playing, the West Boro Baptist uh, Church thing, you know, where they go protest yeah, soldiers' everything. funerals and right. you know these despicable human beings go and protest all this stuff. And they're outside of the every Foo Fighter show protesting them. Well, I guess the because Foo they Fighters... thought it was sat- Satan too instead of Satan. Or... <laughs> right. They misread. Oh, but well, we like they, Satan, um, all right. Uh, the Foo Fighters got a caravan. First of all, they got on the back of a flatbed truck 
with speakers and music. They had a dancers in the uh, the next car behind them. They had people walking and dancing in like short skirts and stuff. And they were playing music uh, and uh, and they were like singing to them. They would they stopped in front of them and, and sang to them and asked them why they were so angry. It, it's a really funny video. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Yep, that's great. I did not see that. That'd be funny. Love it. That's good. All right, so any other moments, uh, Dean, you want to call out before we move on? Um, I one thing I I mean I don't know if I want to call it out, but it is fun to go back and and watch. I did go back and watch the first uh, taping. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you of it? Just just I just a I was looking for the audio quality just just to see the difference between a these headphones and the lavalier mics that we used. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was definitely interesting to to see the dynamic. What do you call it again? Convincing idiots. Convincing idiots. So it's a new podcast that uh, we're going to or vlogcast. What are these called? Vlogs, I guess. I would call it a multicast. You're, multicast. We're going to do podcasts and videos. So yes, that's multicast. right. Multicast. Sounds that's good. right. You know, because a lot of people like they they enjoy listening to what we have to say. In a <laughs> bar <they>? somewhere, <laughs> at least that's what we're told. We enjoy listening. To what yeah, we're say. so we thought, why not? Uh, why not uh, pilot a, a, a podcast here? So that what the show's about here is going to be pop culture here, guys. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about a variety of subjects: music, movies, TV, whatever you name it, sports, what anything. Absolutely, and we'll take ideas from our our viewers out there. Right. And we're going to try to convince. It's a dual. Suck. It's not good. Right. <laughs> um, well, the reason being is that the three of us are standing next to each other in front of a, in front of a bar, right? Exactly. Right. We're, we're looking over. The, I think I'm in the middle, and I'm, I keep looking yeah. side to side you guys, and you guys have to look around me to talk to each other. It, it, it was an awkward setup. Um, sure. Mm-hmm. When, and if you guys go back, and I think it's on our YouTube, the – our second live show that we did in Nick's basement um, was a much better setup. We were around a table. We didn't have to, you know, stand like in a, in a lineup or police lineup. Um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a much better. And that's a, that's one of the shows I'm pretty proud of too. Was that live show that we did? Yeah, uh, that was fun. Facebook Live. I don't. Um, I don't even remember how long ago that was, but it was, that was fun to do. A few months ago, I want to say, wasn't it like in April? Yeah, I think so. I think. I mean, there was a couple hiccups here and there, but it, I think content-wise, I thought it was a fun show. Yeah, it was. It was fun to really riff like that. Um, I think we learned our lesson on, you know, definitely having some talking points prepared. I think we relied a lot on uh, for that one for maybe people talking back to us or having things to say, and some people did, but for the most and, part, it was just kind of And we thought us, we could do a guest know. thing that, that, that didn't, didn't quite work out. Yeah, we planned on having <laughs> video chats, that, and that never panned out, so right. yeah, that's yep. true. Yeah. Yeah, but no, that that's uh, that's true. That was uh, that was that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. I have not gone back and and listened to the first one yet ever. I think I'm going to do that in preparation to our one year anniversary. I would mm-hmm. like yeah. to celebrate that by going back and listening and watching. And I realize it's probably actually that'd be kind of fun if uh, you know cameras are if the three of us wanted to get together and uh, try to do that. Ooh, that might be do kind a of cool. watch along. That would, yeah, just just mm. us watching it because I think it would be so cringy at, at points that I want yes. you guys there with me to cringe with. So yep. I think it would be kind of fun. I like that a yeah. lot. That'd I can imagine just the the you know I mean we had no real plan other than just getting together at Bride's basement and doing it. Talking so about Star Wars. There, yeah, we we're just like we'll just go and like we set it up right then and there and we just fucking won it and so well. I that, bet not, there was a lot of actually. awkwardness, or not awkwardness, but you know. Actually, Nick, um, it was the first and only time you and I had written prep for the show, <laughs> which was <laughs> which was quite impressive. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, we we both had like written. <laughs> we we wrote down our our favorite yeah. Star Wars in order, and that's right. Yeah, I was blown away by that. I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, wow, really, look at us. You know, we really took initiative on that one. We were so dedicated, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. <laughs> immediately, and then never again. And then somebody jangled, <laughs> jangled keys, and we uh, we lost yeah. focus. Yeah. What about you, you Brian? Did, at least. Yeah. Have all you gone stuff back there? Have you watched any of that? Have you gone back and watched or listened to the first episodes or anything? 
You know what? I have not done that. Uh, no, I have not gone back and watched or listened to some of the uh, earlier earlier ones. I, I need to do that myself. Of course, uh, I listen to we put them together. I hear right. it two or three times as we go because I put right. the you know, the videos together as you guys. He know, hears us in his sleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, but just going back and listen, just to listen is a, is a good experience without having to worry about trying to edit something or whatever. You just taking it in to enjoy it would be interesting. Uh, one of my favorite. How do you is, do that? <laughs> I don't know. We have we have. Uh, <laughs> Fans yeah. that are still trying to figure out that dynamic. Yeah, how right. can we enjoy now, this? How can I listen to this and still and enjoy it? Also? Uh, that's, like, the, that's the tricky that's part. The, mm-hmm. That's the trick. See, <laughs> I, 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 I still enjoyed our the Christmas episode, the convincing Christmas. It's still mm. uh, one of my favorites. It was just us, uh, you know, just the. Wasn't that just you was, and me, Brian? No, no, that was we, we did one just you and I. Okay. That, okay. But then that we did the, the three one. of us, and Go we ahead. had we, we talked about our favorite uh, Christmas movies and mm-hmm. moments and different things with the three Everybody of us. Everybody agreed and, on Jingle All the Way, and we all uh, did, uh, yep, and then we well, talked about beers. Maybe I have to maybe. rewatch it. All right. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I'm the Millennial Santa. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Can we start hashtag yo, yo, yo on things from now on? Yes. Please? I like that. Well, well, yeah, I'm sure it, no one's using it. I'm, I'm sure of that. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think there should be a, some sort of meme with Brian's face with yo, 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 I'm a millennial Santa. I'm going to make that. <laughs> I think that needs to be made. I will make that. If there it, were a millennial it. Santa, he would look like you. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. We need more likes. We need more <laughs> likes. That, that, will, that, will be the, that will do it for sure. That'll, be, that'll springboard us up to 327 from 326, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll get that one. We'll get them. Yeah. All right, so we talked about our favorite uh, Christmas content uh, and uh, honorable mentions, which is also some very good Confirm stuff. that, but uh, <laughs> no, but that was just fun. That was just, you know, we were all in the Christmas spirit, enjoying ourselves, and it was uh, right in the middle of the, where, you know, the pandemic was still in full force, and we were very secluded and yeah it was and now we're gonna get to do that again this christmas that's something to look forward to yes that's the way that's right yeah to be locked down again (laughs) for christmas you mean yeah Uh and we'll be in the christmas spirit and we'll you know be in the throes of the pandemic again it'll be just lovely it's the same we get to relive that lovely experience that's right that goes to christmas past again Mm -hmm. absolutely ah very good yep yep Okay, so it, 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 those of you out there that's listening, thank you so much. We definitely have a few that's been listening from the very beginning. We mentioned names all the time. Mm-hmm. Matt, Sarah, Anita's listening to it. My mom actually does listen. She uh, yes. that, she sent me a text one day uh, uh, talking about the Mr. She said, Heidi Ho. That's what it was. It was that. after the, uh, yeah. the okay. Stink, Stink Palm Theater. Mm-hmm. And uh, episode, and she said she sent so me she, laughing face emojis and said Heidi Ho, mm-hmm. and I was like, "You do listen." So, so she, she also must have challenge. heard. She must have also heard mm-hmm. you call her out then as well. Ooh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then she did favor the podcast on. I think it was an anchor, so we got a notification of oh, that. So thank okay. you for thank you for that. And then we have. Doug on it, Dean. So the the manager of Ignite and her husband are. Rochelle. Rochelle and John? Jonathan. Yep. John. Okay. Thank yes. you. So Jonathan watches the show. So thank you for that. We appreciate that. And we that. St- still seem as we may have maybe one, who knows, could be a singular listener. I don't know. Germany, perhaps Ireland is still listening. So if you're still out there, thank you for your support. Tell a friend. And uh, we'll hopefully do a Thousand fifty more of these things. Yeah. You never know. You never and even know, if you pop so. in every once in a while and you miss some for a couple months and you come back, anything at all. If you're watching or listening or intaking this content whatsoever, we appreciate you. If it's the first time or your yep. third time or well, I think a, I think a lot of people. Um, a lot of people. Uh, well, a lot of us. Uh, we have made these requests towards the end. I think we're early enough in this episode to where I would like to ask people to write in. Facebook, just at least tell us where you're from. Like Brian said, you don't. We don't know exactly. We can't have. We don't have the thing of like how many people in Germany, how, how many people in, in Ireland. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're from another country or out of state, even if you're outside of Ohio, comment on our Facebook page or email or however Nick tells you in the beginning, the end of this shit. Write in and tell us, you know, 
where you're from, who you are, yeah. and where you're from. It does help to uh, rate and review the podcast on yes. Apple or Spotify or whatever. True. So you can always just put that in the you know where you're from. I listen from here, and you know yeah. I like this guy, not that guy, or enjoy this, or like when they talk about that. Anything, anything yep. at all. We we appreciate it all the same. Well, so, yep. I mean, don't. don't... Don't put what you don't like. I mean, th- th- there's only so many characters you can use. Right. Make sure you get the stuff uh, you do like out of the way first. That way, if you run out of characters at the end, you know, those the things that, you know, you're just nitpicking at that point. There's, there's mm-hmm. no point bringing up all that stuff. You guys are almost as entertaining as the uh, Afghanistan news. Almost. Hmm. As entertaining. Almost. 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 We're, I mean. Yep. It's hard to compete, yep. but that, you know, it's a lot going Yep. On. Yep. Okay, so uh, yeah, we we appreciate your support, and we will. You may be assured that we will continue to strive hard to improve our content. To mm. okay, ensure let's not. Let's lofty with the promises, to, Brian. Don't you know I mean? overpromise. Okay. Well, sorry, <laughs> but. You, we uh, we can assure you we will try. How about that? I feel like you're making a lot of promises on my behalf that I I just don't you're know. Right, checks I'm that your ass look, can't cash. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not going to make promises to you that won't keep. All right, if if nothing else, I'm I'm good I'm good for my word, right? But if I'm not making promises, then don't expect me to do things. That's why I don't make promises. Okay, well, there you go. I Dean, can make this promise. I can make this go ahead. promise. Go ahead. We I promise on behalf of the entire show. That we will finish this episode. There you go. How's that? Very good. good, right? Very good. I mean, it... See, now yep. the commitment is scaring me, and I have to. <laughs> can, we take you know, Dean, can we take a commercial break, please? You know, Dean, who does make promises and does keep them? Ooh, I think I know somebody who does that. Other than uh, Nick's mother for 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 listening to the show. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The only other person I know that that will not break the promise that will do exactly what he says is Mm -hmm. Aaron Blake. Aaron Mm Philip Blake from Blake Insurance. It's right in the name, insurance. It's your insurance. Well, I no assurance that you're insurance. Oh, that's right. We don't know the difference between those words. (laughs) I was trying. His last name isn't insurance. It's Blake. (laughs) Blake is not the middle name. Why do you think that his parents (laughs) named him Philip Insurance, or I'm sorry, Aaron Philip Insurance Blake. If he That's wasn't going to assure you insurance. Mm-hmm. That's right. Luckily, he is, and he does. <laughs> See, Blake Insurance is a is an Erie insurance agency located right here in Barberton, Ohio. You see, they offer auto, home, renters, business, and even life insurance. Very important. You see, Erie Insurance is above all else in service. You want to call 234 571 Five three five nine, or go ahead and get on the inter- interwebs mm-hmm, and type in that Blake Insurance, Blake Insurance LLC. Don't forget that LLC.com. Give you your free five minute quote today. And if you saw our recent uh, commercial, um, it's that easy. You saw me do it. I got my quote. I got my paperwork. I signed my paperwork. I am saving money. And you can too. Aaron, the insurinator Blake. He got you. Ooh, he got insurinator. you. Insurinator. The insurinator. That's good. Dude, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. I'll write, that's good. write that fucker down. Yeah. Insurinator. Right, so you, get a, you get a free five minute quote from I did. Aaron and the Insurinator. Then, uh, the insurinator. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was trying to find a good way to the free quote into Dean. You saw the movie The Free Guy. Actually, yeah, I did. today, I did. which just came out, I think, last week, correct? Yeah, I believe so. Right, so very Friday. recent. Yes, yeah. Ryan Reynolds, Free Guy. We all already we commented separately that the trailer for Free Guy was very original with Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool rating the Free Guy movie, which is uh, one of the more uh, interesting trailers that I've ever well, seen, really. So well, go back and check that, it out on YouTube. But go ahead. In that trailer, Brian. Mm-hmm. Um, he was. It was kind of. It did a bu- a couple of things. Mm-hmm. A, th- they reviewed the trailer for Free Guy, so it sold that movie. And B, it it showed that now um, 
Deadpool is in the MCU. That's right. Be- because sitting next to him was, I can't remember the character's name, but the big rock guy from uh, Thor Ragnarok. That's right. Oh, okay. And the reason they combine that is because, A, they're moving uh, Deadpool into the MCU, and the guy who voices that rock guy is Taika Waititi, who plays the bad guy <laughs> in Free Guy. Ah, okay. Well, there so you go. the synergy of everything kind of coming together. Um, mm-hmm. And that dude's awesome in it. Ryan Reynolds, fantastic. Uh, the girl, I don't know her name, but she's good. Um, yeah, it was a fun movie. Um, it was a fun summer movie. So the free guy cool concept. This is not related to Marvel, or is no, nope, okay. not at all. Okay, no, they were just using Marvel, um, to help you know because boost that, right? Because both of them are now involved in Marvel. And they were in the movie together, so I got you. Um, yeah, but the movie is fun. Um, I how does that I, work? How does the, what work? like the the people that make this this other movie that's independent of you know like Marvel Studios like they they have the the budget to pay for them to pump that? How does that work? Or do they does does Marvel Studios do that on good faith of that like this will eventually pay off for them as well? Well, it did pay off for them because it was their announcement that uh, Deadpool is part of the MCU. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying, though? Like, I mean, if you're just a standalone movie and then you go, hey, you know how Deadpool's like a big deal? Like, we're going to, like, have a trailer to where we're allowed to use Deadpool because it's the same actor. I mean, Ryan Reynolds doesn't own the rights to Deadpool. That would be a Marvel, uh, you know, thing. But uh, the Taika Waititi also, not only does he do the uh voice the voice for the the big rock guy we need to find that, that, oh, that character's yeah, name because i can't remember his name but uh-huh. he's also the writer and director of, of thor ragnarok and he's doing uh love and thunder okay so that's why he's wanted to you know do the collaboration Cross that's why marvel yeah. agreed i'm assuming agreed to it and i'm sure there was money exchange or yada 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 but or i mean it could be same producers i don't know yeah but no, Free Guy was not part of Marvel, as far as I know. Um, it was a neat concept. Uh, the guy's in a video game, and he doesn't know he's in a video game. Korg. Then, Korg. Well, that should be easy to remember. Korg. K-O-R-G is the rock Korg. guy from... Mm. Yes. So I, 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 I agree with you. It's probably just a partnership Disney had. It's, a, it's yeah. an easy way for them to get to get hype up, hype up uh, Deadpool and the universe... Like you say, you got two guys that's in both movies. You know, why not? It's probably just a joint partnership. It could have been Ryan Reynolds' idea for all that, for all I know. I don't know. Right. But, uh, yeah. you know, so. Okay, so recommended, Dean. Give, you give I it, uh, you go, go check it out. Go to the, see the theater, wait till the streams. What do you um, think? It's, there's a lot of, like, computers, you know, or uh, uh, video game looking stuff. Mm-hmm. So a lot of explosions. But I don't know if, like, yeah, if you like the theater, go see it in theater. But I don't. There's nothing like a Marvel Cinematic Universe thing where, like, wow, I need to see this on the big screen where you have like the just the magnificent, you know, colors and the sounds and stuff. Mm-hmm. If you saw it on on a regular TV, I think it'd be the same thing. But I still recommend it. If you're going to the theater anyways and you're looking for something to see for the summer, whatnot, uh, yeah, I go see that. That's fine. five dollar viewing, not necessarily the full. The full um, yeah. price. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. why I did. <laughs> I'm going to need okay. a price point. What is it actually worth? Is it $5 budget I, movie night? Or is it like I, full price? I, like, If I paid full price, I wouldn't have been upset. Okay, well, that's fair. Okay. That's fair. I'd be like, that's okay, decent. that was cool. That's a decent review. Okay, all right. Like for me, it's like we talked about this way. Shang-Chi Theater. Hmm. For me. That's, I'm not that, sold that's, yet. Okay, I, that's theater for me personally, but I'm gonna yeah. go to the theater to see it. Yeah, but I'm still not sold on it yet. I, I okay. don't know. I don't know if I care about these characters yet. Okay, kind, kind of like a, because watched... it's involved with Doctor Strange and you know, no, no. because they're Asian of <laughs> Asian descent. No, mm. no, no, mm. no, no. Which one of these guys are you, Dean? I am the idea I'm that I'm until <laughs> yeah. until you show me. 
why I should care about these characters. And I guess, yes, I, I grasp the concept that you don't know until you watch the movie. <laughs> um, like the I Winter that... Falcon. <laughs> it, but you knew the, them. Like the, they... Mandarin, the Mandarin's in it. And also, they, have you seen the clips with him fighting the Abomination? I have not seen that. You know who the Abomination is? Yeah, from Hulk. That's right. Right. Yeah. So there's a scene with Shang Chi with Abomination. Check that picture out. That's hmm. okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. cool. Hey, it looks like the comic book Abomination as well, not the crappy Abomination from the yeah, questionable yeah, Hulk movie, Hulk the last one. one yeah. But yeah. Anyways. Okay. Well, I I thought the same thing though of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm like, eh. Do I really care about you know these new characters? Yeah, fair enough. Turns out I, I sure did. So I'm going yeah. to go see it in the theater. Yeah. I got the same vibe with the Inhumans, by the way. I'm like, eh. In, was that Eternals. A, that's a, Eternals. 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 Uh, Inhumans was a TV series, right? Am I You're right. Yeah, right. correct with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, yes, and I'm saying it's how it wrong. he it's... describes you and I, Nick. It, the Inhumans. So the the Inhumans will be doing a podcast next week. Alone. Yeah. And I'm yes. not sold. It's not <laughs> sold on it yet. He's not sold on us either. Not sold yeah. on. <laughs> nope. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not, it's worth not the many are. rental. Yeah. yeah. L- listen. <laughs> listen next week. Find out. Yeah. Don't don't download it. I wouldn't download it and commit that yeah. hard to it. But you know, maybe yeah. just play the preview. If, see what happens. If you see us in the five dollar bin, maybe give us a listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, something to work up to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the five dollars. Sure. Right. We yeah. are an acquired taste. I would say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, I saw the uh, Val Kilmer biopic uh, Sunday night. I watched that on Amazon Prime for free and streaming there. I saw uh, that on Amazon. What is that? Uh, looks fascinating. Yeah. Give us your review. How was that? Uh it's it's worth a view. The incredible yeah. thing about that is, uh, if, you've, if you've watched the preview, you've already gathered this, and this is no you know spoiler. I mean, he was he has incredible videotape footage of throughout his entire life. So there, he said it, he's one of the first people that he knew that had a video camera, and there's footage way back of him and his uh, his two brothers as children making home like movies like reenacting real movies and things like that he's got videotapes of these and he's got these think tapes all it shows it for a little bit it's all organized in storage what's on each tape he's got them all organized and stored Hmm. he he and his team whatever painstakingly went through these and strung together clips throughout the entire uh thing from him when he was a kid going back and showing him very early auditions and in college plays hmm. uh, and then certainly working up to some of the bigger movies with Top Secret was his first and then certainly Tombstone and some of these bigger and then the debacle of the Island of Dr. Moreau and some of the problems there. All this stuff, very, very interesting all the way through. I really didn't know what he was doing before he got uh, sick, but he was doing a, a one man Mark Twain play that he wrote. He was trying to make enough money how to do you make. Do, how do you write a Mark T- Twain play? He was just using a lot of. He he was playing Mark Twain, oh, talking okay. to the audience. Okay, okay, as if he was Mark Twain, just you know, gotcha. with the, with the, seeing some of his jokes and just interacting with the crowd and stuff like that. Very good makeup. What did he get uh, sick from? He got throat cancer. Poor oh. man, and then he had to have. Uh, chemo and so forth. So basically, he is better now, but he can Good. no longer speak. He has a, a tube, an air tube in his throat. Okay. Oh, geez. And to talk, he has to push a button in the front of his tube, and it's just that it, you know, it's the you know, it's it's just it's a guy talking to an air tube, poor man, right? So he could he can talk, but hmm. the, the the Val Kilmer. You know, voice is you know is gone, unfortunately, wow. with all of this. So, and I'm um, not making a joke of, of this. I, I, sure. I legitimate this is a legitimate question. So yeah. he's not going to be in the new uh, Top Gun movie. Actually, I think he is. I oh, think he oh, is. Good. I don't okay. know if they're going to have him actually speak or they'll dub or something or okay. what. I, I believe he will make an appearance good. as Iceman in cool. in the movie. Um, and you know he and he still you know, he dresses very fashionably. He seems to be okay. 
but he tells his whole life story and he wears like cool scarves and things like that to kind of hide a little bit, but he doesn't, it's not any, you know, he doesn't hide. I mean, it will speak and, you know, people that know him know he's, he's suffered through this and everything. And, uh, uh, I mean, he's lucky to be alive, you know, with the cancer, I guess, and everything, but, uh, but he's got two kids, got a great relationship with his kids. And one cool thing about this was his son read the narration of his story in the, in the movie here. And when you listen to his son, you could say, yeah, you know, you for, at first, if you wouldn't didn't know it was his son, you would think it was a young Val Kilmer reading oh, to wow. you. They have that kind similar of... voice and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, he's, he's got okay uh, relationship with his ex-wife. His kids are doing all right. Uh, so he's just, he's doing, he's doing okay. Was there anything like earth shattering and things like that? Not necessarily. It was just an interesting story of a well-known actor that, you know, Watching him progress through his career the, with the incredible video footage, and then just you know going through this tragedy, but yet persevering and everything else. So, is it worth a watch? On it, yes, absolutely. Huh. So you know, take some time and check it out. And very cool. Yeah. So Val is okay. Uh, so a hey, look. Go ahead. Uh, well, I, questions on you, Brian. Um, mm-hmm. In a rating system, mm-hmm. just thought of this. In your rating system, how many mm-hmm, mm-hmm, do you give this movie? <laughs> <laughs> in a one to ten, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, I would give it a five, maybe a six. Mm-hmm. Oh, good! Mm-hmm. Wow! Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. Right. Very so. good. I, I have a follow-up game. So uh, we, we're uh, the aforementioned uh, three different friends uh, from three generations. We are all familiar with Val Kilmer. Give me three movies that come to mind initially for Val Kilmer. What are your three Val Kilmer movies that come to your mind? Well, this is easy. So, Brian, go ahead. Tombstone, mm-hmm. Doc Holliday, mm-hmm. his favorite role for me by mm-hmm. far. Top Gun as the Iceman. And his first movie, Top Secret. Love the movie. Watched it again a couple weeks ago with Allie. Still hilarious. He is terrific in it. Sings all the songs. Those three, and then very, very close is uh, The Doors, uh, Jim Morrison. He did a very, oh, very good job right. as Jim yeah. Morrison and The Doors. So That yeah. one, yeah. How about that? All right, Dean, what's your three? First three um, movies that come to mind, Val Kilmer. Easily. Were they the Top, same? Top Gun, Tombstone, mm-hmm. and The Doors. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mine were Easy. different. I have Tombstone. Sure. Tombstone, when I think Val Kilmer, you're going to laugh. Tombstone, Okay. Batman Forever. Okay. The, the Saints. Sure. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's just because... And I, I don't I, think iconically it should be no, that way, but... it's just... At your I age, think Val Kilmer... Sure. I think... And I, the, and honestly, Tombstone probably would... And I've seen Top Gun, and, like, Tombstone probably wouldn't have initially been in it. It's just I really like Tombstone, but when, you know, right. the first time as when I was, uh, you know, Val Kilmer was on my radar was Batman Forever. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, The Saint is one of the mo- more recent movies he did after that, riding off of that he, Batman fame. And then he it was, was like for, he did that movie. Yeah. So yeah. I don't even really remember that. Wasn't he? He was blind in this, right? He was a blind man in The Saint, and that was he played different characters. Okay, in The Saint, it was like he was I don't like even a remember it that well. It's just when I think of Al Kilmer, I think of The Saint, and I remember the movie poster. Yeah. And for some reason, I'm like, why is that one of the three? I realized it probably should be for me. Tombstone, Batman Forever, Top Gun, but I, right, you know, the Saint is just in there. That's Val Kilmer. I don't know why. Well, he he talked about that. He the, the Batman Forever. He was thrilled to get the part of Batman, but the suit was extremely difficult to work with. He said mm-hmm. he couldn't barely move. He could not hear anything in the suit, and he just hated it. And he just he said that basically for him there wasn't anything he could do to really give a great performance, especially against uh, Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones. He said he just was sort of there, but the yeah. movie did well, and they offered him the next right. movie, which which eventually went to George Clooney, but he turned down Batman ah. to, film, to film The Saint because he thought The Saint was more interesting. And yeah, and that was based on an old uh, uh, British show with Roger Moore who went on to play James Bond in the in the 80s but uh, he just liked the idea that you could play different uh, yeah. roles in the saint with different disguises and whatnot but anyways yeah, yeah that's an interesting choice yeah. though the saint yeah 
I forgot okay. about those doors. I forgot about the fun doors game, one, but yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Um, we're. I. I think looking at the time here, yes. we might want to uh, come to a, a quick break for yep. those of you on YouTube. Uh, there might be quick uh, break. Some, some fun uh, pictures and whatnot. Uh, but you on audio, you're going to hear um, the sultry, amazing tones. Yes. Of Mister Brian Fisher. Yes, absolutely. So listen to that, and we'll come back and talk more pop culture stuff for your listening and viewing pleasure. We'll be right back. And we're back on Convincing Idiots. I am the millennial Nick alongside my friends here, or so we like to call ourselves every week when we get together. We have a Zenial Dean. We have a Gen X Brian. I don't know when I'm pointing on my screen. If you're watching on YouTube, if that's actually and where they are. very fast. Probably not. They could be anywhere. But we are back on Convincing Idiots. We've uh, discussed we're a few in your topics. Heart. That's where we're at. That's right. Number one in your hearts. We are mm -hmm. back here. Um, so... This week, gentlemen, uh, as we like to uh, label ourselves nerd and pop culture enthusiasts, this week, Disney Plus had us asking ourselves, what if Marvel? <laughs> That's right. What if this show was entertaining? What, what could it be? What mm -hmm. could it be? What right. could it be? So, the, yeah, so the what if, uh, if you, you know, if you're a Marvel fan, this has been a comic book series for many, many years, going back to the uh, 70s. So I have uh, personally mm -hmm. several issues of the What If series. And just what a cool concept this was. So it's just basically exactly it. So you know, we, we want to tell a different story. It could be a singular, very cool issue. And mm -hmm. it's had a whole different storyline. And if what if this one event went a different way? what may have happened to this character and this entire universe around this character by one event. So just to, for instance, one of the first issues that I purchased as a kid, this is in grade school, literally was what if Spider-Man caught the burglar that ran past him when he was uh, mm. in his showbiz, uh, he let the burglar, as you might know, certainly in the Spider-Man universe, he, you know, the burglar ran past him. He let him go. That's not my problem. Burglar later on killed his Uncle Ben and <gasps> taught, Sp taught Spider Man a valuable lesson in Dude. great power becomes great responsibility. In this episode, in this series, wow. where there's Kishu, excuse me. Wow, he, he catches is, the. He is very good. surprised at this. Yeah. Look at this. He, I have it ready. Um, you got to say spoiler alert. Yeah. No, you, no, you were frozen like this. Was I frozen? Oh. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a good spot. It's good timing. <laughs> good timing on the freeze. I got very excited. Yeah. <laughs> But he catches the burglar, and then the Spider-Man on this issue becomes a huge uh, TV and movie star, and Uncle Ben lives and all that. So there's all kinds of these different ones. Grew up to make some damn fine rice. That's sure. Absolutely. <laughs> and so uh, now the, the, the as you mentioned, the, the Marvel um, uh, Marvel Universe making a new series on Disney+. Plus. The first episode launched last week. Uh, what if Agent Carter became the super, or she took the super soldier serum over steve rogers what right. would have happened there Nick, uh, they also brought back some of the original actors yes. what you keep the video is now restored well i haven't been seeing anything so i'm just listening to brian and i, I oh, so you're stoic up, so. you're very still man sorry brian it... that's okay so uh you and i watched it dean nick hasn't gotten to yes. it just yet so what did you think dean of the what if First episode with Agent Car Captain Carter, I should say. Captain Carter. Um, eh, I'm alright. Okay. Um, okay. It's a great you know, <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> I I'm looking forward to the series. I love the concept, mm -hmm. but I I I don't think that they started with the right episode. It didn't okay. grab me. The um the noir type uh, animation that they used was really good. Uh, yes. It looked it looked great. It just, it, I don't know, Captain Carter wasn't a character that I was clamoring to see what else she could do. Yeah. Um, but 
I'm looking forward to the rest of them. And I have a feeling that they started with her because it is going to tie in with other episodes. So they had to start with her to explain or to tie in properly with other episodes of What If. That's my hmm. uh, guess. Okay. If if hmm. if not, why start with that episode? It just seemed kind of weak. Yeah, it's it's it's, I mean, it's interesting why they didn't maybe start with the T'Challa episode because it's so it's his last right uh, appearance as Black Panther. I don't know, but uh, that may be a finale thing. Then I don't know. That, I'm that, sure they already had him mapped out. They probably have him in order. Yeah, already, because because that, so. if you yeah. once you watch it, Nick, you'll realize that they're it does you you do get the idea that they're going to tie it into other what if scenarios okay. like it's it's going to be a what if universe it i'm guessing mm-hmm. it the way it seems like at the very end brian you, you know what i'm saying yeah that seems like it's going to start tying in and, and kind of mixing Could. in with other uh hmm. stories so we'll see do you know Could. if one of the episodes brian and we were reading the uh the spider's shadow uh, series of the uh, you know if if Spider Man had kept the symbiote and and had bonded with him, uh, do you know if that's going to be one of those one of these episodes or are they I, is that they're going to go on a different no Spider Man's what if go is going to be um, what if he was chosen to be the Sorcerer Supreme? Oh, that's right. Oh, yes, hmm. you're right. I'd yep. probably watch that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, and that actually that Awful that ties that ties into the the mm-hmm. Doctor Strange movie because, or I'm sorry, the new Spider Man movie because Spider Man actually this is no secret Spider Man gets right. a suit from Doctor Strange with Doctor with some mystic powers to it. You can find pictures of this out there. I did not know that actually. Yes, yeah, so you can check that out. So it's, uh, it's he's wearing a suit. Spoiled he's the got shit like out the, it, Brian. He's got the eye of whatever in his <laughs> chest, like the one on the spider, and he's shooting a web, but it's shooting out some of the, uh, you know. Like Doctor Strange is, you know, he makes the Portals. circles, like the Mr. Yeah. Portal thing or mm-hmm. whatever it is. So first he spoiled that yeah. Uncle Ben dies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hope you weren't, you know, hope you knew that. And then now the new suit. I mean, it's like, <laughs> geez, give us some time to get to this, these storylines, would you? I mean, good. All right. So episode two looks like it's going to be the Black Panther one. So that's the one where <laughs> okay. it's, uh, what if T'Challa became Star-Lord versus, yeah. so he's, he gets picked up in outer space and then... I'm not sure the other ones. I have to look that up. And that what is Chadwick Boseman is, is doing the uh, the voice yes, that's right. to Chow. Right. Wow, cool. Yes, absolutely. So episode three looks like it stars Loki. Yeah, interesting. So yeah, it's it, it's like like you said, all kind of tied together. I'm looking forward to uh, the Marvel. The zombies will make an appearance in one of these as well, and then they I say that the Marvel zombies will come into Loki season two. Is the rumor also in one of these alternate, you know, timelines or something well, like that? So uh, M- uh, M- Morbius, M- 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 Mor- Mobius. I'm sorry, Mobius, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The vampire. Uh, he- Yes, he had, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Owen Wilson. Uh, Owen Wilson, excuse that, me. I'm, I said, I was thinking Morbius the vampire. Mobius oh, no, no, no. from Mobius. Loki, yes. excuse me. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. He had said in, uh, I think, like uh, the first episode uh, that, you know, hey, we've, we've dealt with um, Titans and we've dealt with zombies and vampires. Like he went through like a long list of stuff okay. that we okay. haven't even seen yet in the, in the MCU. So I'm, okay. I'm, so it, it is at least showing that it is in the MCU. Okay, very good. Yeah, so interesting. I like the concept. Certainly, I love many of the comics. It'll be interesting to see what the, what they do with it, and I guess you could do anything with it you want to. So definitely worth now, a, worth a, worth a what? Now, did you like Dean? The they got some flack in. In the animated, they, they sort of shot some of the animated scenes almost frame for frame as some of the scenes in the Captain America no, movie. No, I like that. You like I that? Li- okay. I, I want that to happen. You know what I mean? Because it, okay. it's it's showing that it's not exactly like a 100% different product. I want there to be like, oh, this is, you know, frame for frame. This is what this scene would have been like because it was this way in it when it was him doing it, if that makes mm-hmm. what I'm saying, makes sense. Sure. But yeah, I, I like that synergy of it. Okay. Um, now it did give me a, uh, an idea, right? So I, I kind of wrote my own screenplay after, after watching the what if episode, I don't okay. know if you guys, I, this, you know, I wanted to tell you guys offline, but I was a little embarrassed. So I thought I'd, I'd 
I'd hold off till now. But okay. I wrote my own what if episode and I'm not going to go through word for word, but but just the pre- premise of it is that that the night that um, Brian and I were at the at, at Ignite talking about this podcast, when 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 the 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 seed, if you will, of what's planted, um, I call Nick and he doesn't answer. Right? Oh. What if he didn't answer, and oh. this fucking podcast becomes entertaining? Huh? Uh huh. That what a kind of a neat story, right? Nick, what, what do you if, think? What if sure. <laughs> maybe we should sure. see what that sounds like? Maybe we should find <laughs> out. <laughs> so, here, here's uh, here's the episode. This is the article here. This is what they know. This particular, this is inverse.com. Uh, episode two is Iron Man and Killmonger. So, what if uh, Iron Man was rescued by Killmonger? I, don't yeah, know. I thought that was going to be the first one for some reason. Maybe because that was in the first one of the MCU itself. I yeah, maybe. Episode three is the Marvel Zombies. Okay. Episode four oh, is to Child Star Wars. Who, who does it say who the zombies? Or what characters are involved in the zombie one? Uh, doesn't say all of them. Although it's a very on video here. It's a very cool one of Tony Stark zombie right here. Oh, so the MCU characters are zombies. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, this is okay. A, I thought they it, were fighting it, zombies. No, no. Gotcha. So okay. yeah, they the turn into zombies. Yeah, the the heroes. Yes. yes. Go check out if you like zombies at all. Check out the there's several graphic novels of the Marvel zombies. The first two. Or absolutely incredible. The most popular okay. Marvel characters become zombies. Okay. Um, and you can imagine they're just completely unstoppable. So you already have the superpowers. Right. Now you're Another a zombie. Zombies and so are they still superheroes or are they, yes, are they bad they, guys? Well, they become they become zombies. They become evil evil. But now they have they, the powers. They want brains yeah, they, they want, yeah, and right. the powers. So they wind up you know, just taking over planets and pawn okay. planets and so forth. And then will they continue? Who knows? It's all kinds of cool stuff there. So you guys, you guys, dig did, zombies. I know Brian, you dig zombies, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Nick. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, I'm not like into zombie things inherently because of that, but like, yeah, it sounds like a cool plot line. I mean, do yourself a favor. Yeah. And this is a sidebar and Brian, I'm sorry. We'll get back to, uh, mm-hmm. uh what if, uh, do yourself a favor, and this is I will all I say with it because it, it, it I don't like we said earlier I am maturing and uh, I am growing as a human being. But are you going to tell us to watch zombie favor? porn right now? Google gonna... zombie porn. <laughs> are you seriously? Gonna... <laughs> it is a thing. I thought I was it, making it, a joke. No, I no, know no. it's a thing. It is a no, thing. I know it's a thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Uh, Google I was zombie making porn. Making the joke. I didn't actually think that's where you're going with it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there you go. I don't think you'll see Captain America in it, but you, you can might. find it. Yeah. I'm sure you, you just might. gotta type I it know. in. It's, it's the internet, Maybe. Brian. Everything's there. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right. So back to what if? There's a they don't know anything about this one other than there's a severed Ant Man head. It's talking in this episode. Uh, an alternate Avengers lineup in episode six. Looks like there's Star Lord, Gamora, Black Panther, Thor, uh, Clint Barton as the Hulk in episode seven. Number eight, there's your Spider-Man as the Sorcerer Supreme. And it looks like it's all they kind of know so far. There's, um, unless that's all of them. So well, Eight episodes anyway. seems to be what they've yeah. been doing with the other ones. Yeah, you know, yeah. interesting, interesting storylines yeah. for sure. Yep. Okay. All right, so another interesting storyline in comics that's uh, making... A lot of news right now is that another uh, very popular superhero character has come out as uh, bisexual. Uh, If you watch the Loki series, you know that uh, Loki kind of came out as bisexual. They sort of made that clear in the series. Mm -hmm. Loki and female uh, Sylvie. Yes, that's right. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And now the boy wonder Robin... The Tim Drake version of Robin in a recent comic series, Batman series, has uh, come out as bisexual. So apparently he uh, saves a friend of his, Bernard Dowd is his kid's name, 
And at the end, uh, he asks Robin out on a date, and I guess it shows them just going out on a date. So uh, that's so it's a very I said it's making a lot of news right now. Um, so you know, all three of us are pretty liberal, pretty open minded. Are these? Is it good? And certainly, there's been other characters as well. Other characters have come out as gay, has come out as lesbian, or whatever. And um, but is all this good in the comic world to have characters taking it to this level of realism? And uh, you know, certainly, there's been you know plenty of characters that struggled. Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. Clark Clark Kent has struggled in his own way, certainly with you know being Superman and trying to hide it, and his love for Lois. All these, oh, there's a lot of things like that. Right. But certainly, th- this is taking things to another level. Uh, <clears throat> is it good? Not so good. Keep it out of the comics. Not against it, certainly in real life. So you know, obviously. But what do you guys think about you know more and more superheroes coming out as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or whatever? So uh, and Nick, what do you what do you think? Go ahead. I understand that there will always be people who want to keep things whatever. They don't want politics and sports or they don't want sexuality and comic books or they don't whatever. I don't know. Whatever. Personally, Mm -hmm. I don't care. And actually, furthermore, um, I think it's really important that there are some characters that because at the end of the day, there are people living in this world. Who some people live in places where they feel comfortable to be themselves and be open and be free. And there are other people who do not have that luxury and they don't have that. So they need to live vicariously through these heroes. And after all, at the end of the day, that's what we're all doing with any character, whether it be a superhero or a Star Wars character we like or an athlete or whatever. Regardless of what we're envisioning them doing, we like to think that maybe we could do it or we'd like to feel how they would feel. So I think it's important for people who maybe don't typically get to see uh, superheroes as maybe what they are. If they look at a Superman or a Batman and they're these they're always with these women and they're, you know, they, you know, Superman, like you mentioned, Brian loves Lois Lane and Batman's, uh, you know, got a lot of money. And, you know, he's different women, love interests and things like that. Tony Stark's a bit of a playboy, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's typical with that, you know, when these characters were initially um formulated that they're you know it was the typical you know heterosexual guy on girl you know maybe if they were big strong men with powers and fame and money they could you know have girls well i think it's important that there are characters that can do you know uh super things um and that you know people of different sexualities or lifestyles or whatever can see themselves in. I think it's really important to have that. And like I said, I know there's going to be some people that don't want that or whatever. And, and I mean, that's really their issue. I couldn't, I don't really care, but I do. I mean, I, I know that some people feel that way, but I think it's important too. I think it's important for people to see themselves. And I mean, anybody who's created any of these comics ever, you know what I mean? Like Stanley or whatever. I mean, that was his whole thing was creating all these different types of characters um, you know, a big driving force of creating the character of Black Panther was that so, you know, African-American kids could see themselves in this character. They've, you know, got all the, you know, the, he wanted to give everybody a little something and, and something that they could see themselves in. So I think it's only natural that as, you know, times progress, people are becoming a little less repressed with their uh, feelings on sexuality and maybe feeling like that they can't show their true colors or be themselves. I think it's appropriate that there are definitely some um, characters in the comic book world that people can relate to. I think it's normal and healthy, and I think it's a good thing. Very good. Dean, what do you think? I cannot wait for the time when we don't have to have this fucking conversation <laughs> that we don't have to think about like, Oh my Defend God. People just being themselves. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> you see, mm-hmm. you see, they've drawn, um, uh, Batman and, um, Catwoman making out Lois Lane and Superman yeah. making out. What is the fucking difference? It's two human beings that either love each other or find each other attractive. 
it's the 21st century. I cannot wait when when this isn't even an article being written. That it's just something you read. Oh, okay, this person uh, is dating this person or goes out with this person or does whatever with this person. The Like Nick said, when the co- for comic books were first written in the 1930s and 40s, yes, the macho uh, machismo types deal was in full effect, right? Mm-hmm. But you know what? So, uh, so was segregation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, women were still uh, repressed more than they are now, and 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 gender, like everything. White males created these comics, and white males outside the comics dominated. And look how that all worked out, right? You know, we, we did a bang up job there, people. But we are now in the 21st century. We are now in a spot, in a place of acceptance, hopefully acceptance. I mean, at least from the, I would hope, the majority, right? Um, and, but I, we are still not where we should be. In A, gender equality, uh, racial equality, um, sexuality equality. Is, is that, did I use that term? Properly, is that how any? I think you so. got what, we you get get what I'm yeah, saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, we're we're not all as equal as we should be, and I cannot wait for the day to where we don't have to have this conversation. That we we can just say, "Hey, did you read the new uh, Batman comic? It was fantastic." That's it. It doesn't matter who's right. on a date with who. Right. It just we're going to get there. Um, we're not there yet, but we're going to get there and I cannot wait till we do. Yeah. And I just was kind of leafing through stuff here. I haven't seen that this has created some like huge, you know, media, social media backlash or anything like that. I think it's just people saying, Hey, this is happening and stuff like that. So in that respect, I think it's, it's... go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I would imagine, um, especially amongst hardcore fans and comic book readers, I think, I mean, you know, and I don't want to speak for everybody who's reading comic books or enjoys these things. I'm not, you know, but I mean, I would think largely you're dealing with a community of people who have maybe throughout life felt like an outcast or felt the need to live vicariously sure. through characters. I feel like the community of maybe your, your most of your comic book goers are probably pretty accepting down to earth level headed people that you probably don't give a fuck about it. Like they just are, it's not a big think. deal. It's maybe a, like, that's a notable thing. Hey, we didn't know this about this character prior, but it's probably not like a big, Hey, you know, keep your bisexuality out of my comic book heroes. Like kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like it's probably not a lot of that, but, um, Hey, you yeah. got your gay and my peanut butter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I agree with what you guys are saying. I think I think I think I think you're both correct in your opinions. You know, in my opinion, I think it's a, I think it's good. I think it's important to show that. I, I don't know. I like the humanization of these characters. I think it's good. I think I think you say I, I think it. I think it makes makes them relatable, and it makes somebody going through some struggles. Maybe gives them some motivation and so forth. You already mentioned a couple there. I also forgot to mention Tony Stark. It, this is pretty pretty big story in the 80s where he was a full-blown alcoholic and he had to suffer and you know get get through that and right he, he did persevere and everything like that so i think it's i think it's good to show these characters going through it because inevitably somebody out there can relate like you said somebody out there can relate you know, at the end of the day if some young kid like you guys already kind of said can say you know i can you know i know this is a fictional character i get it but you know, he or she is going through maybe some similar struggles as I'm going through. And if it gives them some peace and comfort and allows them to escape and, and motivates them to embrace who they are and to fight through whatever personal struggles they're fighting through, then by all means do it. I also agree with you, Dean, to where, you know, hopefully there'll be a day where you won't even make the news in the sense of, hey, did you guys hear that Wonder Woman came out as a lesbian? People are like, oh, okay, sure. That makes sense because, uh, just it just makes sense to me, and, and then people just keep keep move on moving with their day and all that. But it is progress. I unless mean, they, were, they do, unless ago, they do a comic, unless they do a comic of 
Oh, did you hear that uh, Wonder Woman banged crypto? The dog? I don't give a shit. Right. Yeah. Now, maybe it's on that same site as the zombie porn that you mentioned. Maybe that's there, <laughs> perhaps. It is. I don't know. I, I mean, maybe. I don't, whatever. No, but seriously, the... the... <laughs> Might be. I'd imagine, I guess, is what I meant to say. Uh, no, the sometimes... <laughs> Picture this. I mean, maybe that there is a kid, a teenager that is struggling with his... Well, not even struggling with his sexuality. He knows his sexuality, but can't come out to his family because of ridicule and, and what they'll think and, and from school and the, and the kids and what they'll think. And, and it's just eating away at him. And we all know this scenario, have heard this scenario at least, that, you know, that where these kids uh, in order uh, uh, into adulthood uh, struggle with this and, and they have nowhere to go and they end up, you know, maybe committing suicide or, you know, getting into drugs, you know, something to, to um, combat these feelings or try to suppress these or however they deal with it. And maybe just maybe this, this kid just is strung out in his head with all of this. And he's reading the comic book and he sees something like this and maybe it makes him pause Mm -hmm. and take a deep breath Mm -hmm. and go, well, maybe it's maybe it's not so bad. Maybe maybe I should just. It's out there. I am in a in a small podunk town that is closed off. But this world, this it's world bigger. here that I'm reading, exactly shows that it's bigger. That it's okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can't go and 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 tell the neighbor or tell my mom. But at least for now, I can read this and go. Okay, it's not just me. Right. Maybe maybe it's okay out there. I don't have to go to that next step, that next headspace, that next level. So yeah, this is just maybe, now, and at some point I'll be able to get myself in a place where exactly you know I don't have to be. It does I don't have to be here forever. I don't have to. This doesn't have to be my life, kind of thing. I can be a part of that. Yeah, right. Very good. Excellent. So. Uh, so at the very least, we agree it is positive progress. Yeah. We agree, keep Absolutely. all this going. We hope 100%. that we continue to evolve as and at the end people, of the day, and it's not as big a deal. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, sorry, I didn't mean to step on your toes there, but sorry. at the end of the day, the more these characters are different, and I mean, the more they're relatable as being believable as human beings you know what i mean that you look around the people you know in your life you you know there's so many different people in the world and different you know not even just sexuality but just the way people are we talk about personalities or the things that they like or just the type of people they are the more these superheroes are different than just handsome strong you know heterosexual men or whatever i mean the more they're different and have personalities and can show in ways they're different outside of a suit the more believable they are as characters. I mean, yep. just that's just good writing, really. And again, I hope we get to a point in the future to where the only uh, the only thing we all have like in common is the majority of us are assholes. There that's he true. is. Yep. There he is. Yep. <laughs> so you're that, sounding a today. little too level headed there. A little, yep. little too uh, you know. Close yeah, off that fine moment with a with a with a, de- a true dean statement. There, there you have what, it. What are you that's telling good. me? The majority of people you've met aren't assholes. <laughs> Come on, look Everybody, outside. Throw yeah. a rock, you'll hit an asshole. That's true. That's that usually true. just because I'm outside of your window with my pants around my ankles, <laughs> bent over to your window. But you know. that's how I saw your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so kudos to DC, kudos to Marvel for continuing to push the boundaries, make us think, give us something to talk about and reflect on. Mm-hmm. And we had a good conversation here on, you know, as a result. So I can't think of any better way to uh, wrap up this episode with, uh, again, acknowledging uh, these uh, writers and universes to again to challenge us and to hopefully bring some peace to some folks that are going through some struggles out there through these fictional characters. I like guess, like we all agree, if it's, if it's doing that, then it's worth it uh, right there. Uh, 
uh, alone, right? So there Small you have or big, it. So, there's still steps forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So, all right. So, uh, Nick, who wants to remind us? Go ahead, Dean. Go ahead. Thank you. There it is. It's so stupid to think we could just go through it. Let's start here. Let, let's yeah. start here. <laughs> before you do this, you should know better. Why don't you just cut to me before you go to Nick? At least go, hey, dipshit, do you have anything you want to interrupt with before <laughs> I sure. continue? Thoughts, Dean, do you have anything to sure. say? Right. Actually, closing, closing, <laughs> closing thoughts. Closing thoughts isn't a bad okay. idea. Uh, let me try I, it. Hey, dipshit, thoughts. do you have anything actually, you'd like to, uh, to address before we wrap this show up? I do. Okay. I do. And <laughs> That was good. That worked out well. Yeah, right. go ahead. All I was going to say was, in Nick's um, outro, I have mm -hmm. an idea. Go ahead, please. I would like to hear Nick uh, do the outro in a Creed song esque situation. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> are we ready? So absolutely, we are ready. floor is we yours, sir. <laughs> As we close out, if you would like to follow us on Instagram or maybe Facebook. We're also on YouTube and all the social media sites. You can go to our convincing idiots link tree. All the links will be there. Google convincing idiots. L I N K T R E E link tree. We also have a website here. It's convincing it is. Dot WordPress dot com. <laughs> so for the simple sort of convincing it is. I'm Nirok. And I'm Dean. I'm Brown. <laughs> Have we convinced you <laughs> that all dipshits should have last say on closing thoughts? <laughs> I've proven it. Good nerve. <laughs> yeah. And this week on Convincing Idiots. Idiots. All right. All right. One more time. Idiot. How many idiot? Three, two. And this week on Convincing Idiots, Nicholas, what do we have? Well, this was a good one. We talk about this week, 50 episodes for your boys here on Convincing Idiots. 50. Let's start again. 50, I'm just going to say 50 episodes. Okay, start again. Sorry. That's right. Five, four, three. And we have a heck of a show this week on Convincing Idiots. Nicholas, what are you ha What are you having? <laughs> what are you having? Five, four, three. And this week on Convincing Idiots, we have one heck of a show. Nicholas, what do we have? Well, I'm glad you asked, Dean. This week we talked about 50 episodes for us. We talked mm. about the Free Guy movie review, Val Kilmer <laughs> biopic, as well as some Marvel stuff, including What If, the TV series. So, what if you listen, if you subscribe, listen. Ham gravy.